So Nikon just released their new flagship model, the Z6 III. Now, whether this camera is still a potato or not, we are going to be finding out in this today's video. Before we begin talking about the Z6 III, let us give a background check about Nikon. We are all ears because we know Nikon just bought RED. So if you don't know what RED is, RED is a digital cinema camera company which produces cameras that are used in Hollywood productions and many more. So over here, what it says on the net is Nikon Corporation hereby announces that as of April 8th, 2024, it has successfully acquired a 100% of outstanding membership interest of RAID.com which means now Nikon is a full owner of you know, RAID digital cinema camera company aka the RAID giants. So with this we automatically you know gain or you know build up some anticipation or you know some expectation from Nikon that you know the camera that they are going to you know introduce now will be having some more premium features or the cameras which Nikon are going to be you know introducing will be more focused towards video than photo or you know it can be both so nikon corporation was first established on 25 july 1917 with three leading optical manufacturers merged into a comprehensive fully integrated optical company company known as nippon kogaku tokyo kk over the next 60 years this growing company became a manufacturer of optical lenses including those for first canon cameras so what's so fascinating about nikon is that it has also served in world war ii during world war ii this company operated 30 factories with 2000 employees manufacturing binoculars lenses and many more equipment moving on to the next let us talk about my history with nikon this channel exists because i had a nikon so long story in short I had this Nikon Coolpix L340 because of which I got into like videography and then as time passed like I got into cinematography and here I am today a cinematographer and a content creator. Now I'll be honest with you this camera over here is still a potato in front of what we have today because this is just a you know old SLR camera. Now I don't even know like when I bought this but you know it's been over here for years now. Now back in the day I really used to love this camera because it was you know portable, handy and easy to you know go around carrying this particular camera but you know when you are doing something professionally you cannot just rely on this particular piece of tech because the highest quality of video that it can do is you know 720p and in this today's generation you know 720p is not even considered as HD by YouTube anymore. And personally speaking, when I got my hands on this particular Nikon Coolpix L340, this L340 was not a potato camera at all for me. It was because that's all I had. And lastly, what made this Nikon buying red thing a huge deal? Let me explain it to you in a few lines. See, Red Digital Camera Company has been protective over its implementation of raw video recording technology, primarily due to its patents. The company has a series of patents related to its RAID codec RAW format, which is a compressed RAW video format. By compressed RAW, we can easily say that you know it's going to be more storage efficient and easy to work with the system. And you know that's why RAID has restricted other camera companies from using similar RAW recording techniques. Now, what does it mean for you and I? So for you and I. It means that you know Nikon in the near future when they are going to be introducing their new camera models and new camera series they can easily you know integrate those red code draw video format or compressed raw directly onto their camera without facing any legal issues because they are officially the owner of red now and because of that you and I are only going to be benefiting from that only if they are going to be doing what I just said. So now that we know like why Nikon buying RAID was a huge deal and a bit of a history about Nikon and my history with Nikon, I guess now we should move into or dive into the video. So what I'm doing right now is I'm you know directly viewing the official Nikon website where they have put you know the info or the details about the z63 so over here at this page you know we are introduced with you know some images samples some video samples 
from the Z6 III itself. So the first thing over here I actually notice is the dynamic range and the color quality of the videos you know that they have put over here on the website. Now as Nikon has hired some professional colorists, we can easily you know determine or we can easily say that you know they are going to be utilizing full and fullest of what the camera provides. So here we have the picture quality and you know the picture quality over here is like smooth as butter I would say because I really like the color separation over here and you know kind of like the vintage vibe you know or the vibrancy you know they have created over here and you know which they are able to create over here with the Nikon Z6 III. Let's just talk about some specifications over here. So the Z6 III is providing us with you know flexible 6k 60 frames per second raw and you know 5.4k at 60 frames per second recording which is like you know amazing you know 6k 60 is like a huge deal and moving on to the next we have full hd 240 frames per second for up to 10x slow motion video now this is also amazing because my camera over here the canon eos r6 mark ii only does 180 frames per second at max which is also good, but it's far off if you compare it to Nikon at this point of time. On to the next, it has, you know, in-camera video recording for ProRes, ProRes RAW and Nikon RAW. Now, if you are not familiar with, you know, ProRes or, you know, ProRes RAW format, you are actually missing out on something because with the ProRes files, you know, personally, I have edited some, you know, it's like really smooth to edit. You know, there's a, you know, just smooth combination of, you know, the highlights and the shadows, you know, which I really love about this. And with the NRAW, you know, if you aren't familiar with the RAW also, you know, with RAW, we can change the white balance, ISO in the post as well. You know, if we forget to change or if we do not like, you know, a particular ISO in post-production, you know, or while editing, we can definitely go to the settings and, you know, just change the ISO or white balance. Nikon Z63 also provides us with, you know, 125 minutes in 4K 60p recording. Now, personally, I have never, 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 you know, used my, you know, camera for, you know, 120 minutes of continuous recording. And honestly telling, no one's ever going to be using, you know, cameras that way until and unless it's a live show or, you know, they are doing a, you know, interview kind of a thing or you know they are doing a podcast but even though there will be you know intervals and breaks so during that time obviously they are gonna you know hit the stop button the another thing that the z6 mark 3 has is that you know its electronic viewfinder is really 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 impressive because if we compare the sony a7 IV you know evf it's only like 800 nits bright and if we compare, you know, the Z63 over here, it's around like 4,000 nits bright, which is, you know, really bright, I would say. So the other thing Nikon has also done over here is, so they have successfully given us a partially stacked sensor. So if you don't know what's the difference between a rolling shutter sensor, a stacked sensor, a partially stacked sensor, or a global sensor, Here's a really simple way to understand rolling shutter. Rolling shutter is a type of image capture in cameras that records the frame line by line on an image sensor instead of capturing the entire frame at once. The rolling shutter sensor scans from the top of the image to the bottom. So the top of the frame is recorded slightly earlier than the bottom. So that's why you might have noticed in some video footages or even in images, you know, there is warping occurring within the video. So that's why you might have noticed rolling shutter only occurs with fast moving subject. Such as over here in the example, there is a table fan which is spinning. As a result of rolling shutter, the image is fully warped and, you know, as we can see over here, the image is unusable. But with the global shutter captures the image all at once to the image sensor. So that's why no warping occurs. Moving on to the next, Nikon Z63 has a 24 megapixel sensor, which allows users to have a high speed continuous shooting of 120 frames per second, which is really good. And you know, kind of expecting because Sony has already done it with the Sony A93 back in 2023. There are some additional infos over here in the website. You know, the camera can perform at minus 10 degrees Celsius. If you are someone who 
you know, loves to travel into colder places or you know, hilly regions, you know, that's really beneficial for you. So while I was doing some research for this video, I found out on the internet that you know, the autofocus of this Nikon Z6 still lacks a bit because, you know, of course, and one can never be perfect in everything that they do. So it's just, uh, you know, kind of a social situation over here for Nikon. You know, it's good, but it's not so good as well. The Z6 III has improved a lot. And my honest review or POV of this camera is this camera is a really a game changer. You may be having like $6,000, $7,000 worth of camera gears and this and that. But if you aren't skilled enough to use those gears it's pretty much garbage like this now that we have reached towards the end of this today's video in this today's video we have learned about a bit of nikon history why nikon buying rate can be a game changer for you know nikon consumers and as well as for others and you know my history with nikon and my point of view for nikon now personally nikon is a great camera company Back in the days, Nikon was everything that I heard about. After I was done shooting on Nikon and, you know, I had enough with Nikon, I actually moved on to Canon. You know, I had my you know, Canon EOS 1300D. After my Canon EOS 1300D failed, I moved over to Canon EOS R6 Mark II, which is an incredible camera I've been using like over a year or so. And, you know, I'm going to be putting out, uh, you know, genuine review about the Canon US R6 Mark II over here on this channel real soon. So if you enjoyed this today's video, make sure that you subscribe, like and share and I'll see you in the next one.